Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this first day activities at the International System of Units in Fair Digital Data Workshop. I'm Carlos Galvan from Tsunami in Mexico, and I am accompanied by my colleague Jim Felcher from NIST in the USA. Thanks, Jim, for being here. The activities of this fourth day are a little different from the previous days, since uh, we will have parallel sessions with different topics related to digitalization. In this room, we will talk in about digital calibration certificates. So let's move to the agenda, please. This session consists of two identical rounds. In between the rounds is a break. In this break, you will make chance to another room to participate in another topic. Other topics for breakout session are SI core representation and service interoperability, machine actionable metadata and data, and readiness of data for artificial intelligence and machine learning. So let's see what we have for this round. To this, to start this session, we will have two previously recorded presentations. The first is by Daniel Hutchenrater of PTB. Daniel Hutchenrater has been a member of Physical Technical Bundestag PTB in Germany since 2015. His field work is focusing on the online validation of computational extensive evaluation algorithms and the development of universal data models for the digital transformation metrology. And the second presentation, it will be. Uh, Ah, uh, sorry, the, the topic of the Daniel presentation will be introduction topic three, digital calibration certificates. The second presentation will be by Andre Parkov for BNE IIMS from Russia, entitled Requirements for the Structure and Data Format of the Digital Calibration Certificate. Andre Parkov is head of the testing software laboratory of the BNIIMS Russia. He has been dealing with the measurement software and information technology since 2004 and is a developer of several standards and recommendations on metrology in the field of information technology. So let's move to the presentations. Thank you. Dear participants of DSI and FAIR Digital Data Workshop, my name is Daniel Hutschenreuter. I'm a member of the expert group that is supporting CIPM at the transformation of DSI into a digital world. Today, it is my pleasure to give you a brief technical introduction to digital calibration certificates in the context of DSI and machine actionable data. Let us start with the fundamental question, what digital calibration certificate means. First, human readable certificates in digital formats like PDF or Word are not sufficient as digital calibration certificates. DCCs denote files providing the data from calibration in machine actionable form. The data would be given in a structured format like JSON or XML that can be understood by humans too. In many applications, digitalization comes along with an automation of processes such as in automated manufacturing and measuring. Here, DCCs will contribute to the underlying digital data infrastructure. Our challenge is to make the multiple knowledge from different domains in calibration understandable to machines. This example shows the situation uh, as a text that you can find in any calibration certificate today. The green marked information represents measured quantities, values, units, and uncertainties based on fundamental definitions from the SI, WIM, and GUM. The CIPM SI Digital Framework is aiming to define universal digital representation for this data. It would be the anchor for interoperability and reuse of data in all domains of the quality infrastructure that are using DSI. In addition, the blue text is contextual knowledge, such as provenance and quality information, calibration methods and procedures, instruments and calibration classes locations and relations between all these information. It also needs to be considered for a machine actionable DCC. 
New kinds of measuring equipment will allow to store calibration data on the device, allowing to use this data to enhance measurement reasons. Thus, CIPM endorses the DCC for metrological traceability at the point of measurement. In this respect, DCCs and in general, digital certificates with measurement data are interlacing with DSI. The CIPM task group and expert group on the digital SI sees the importance to develop harmonized data services and tools for a SI digital framework that meets the needs of the organizations in the international quality infrastructure. These nine potential topics are more detailed ideas about an interconnection of DCCs with DSI in fair digital data. Number one considers DCCs building upon common data formats for quantities, values, SI units, and uncertainties. Number two is about DCCs obtaining information on the quality qualification through a digital link with a fair database of calibration measurement capability entries. Number three considers structured knowledge on calibration in the form of taxonomies, controlled vocabularies and ontologies. Number four is about services supporting the usage of data in DCCs and users of DCCs, for example, through software tools that help to read data or QR codes on instruments that help to access the data of calibration. Number five considers the impact from and requirements for reference fair metadata in a DCC. Number six considers to assemble a metrological traceability chain from a DCC back to this I definition and fundamental constants. Number seven is about changes of instruments and instrument software motivated by DCCs, also considering digital twins of measuring instruments. Number eight considers the infrastructure that is needed to support the integrity of digital data, like electronic signatures and persistent storage. And finally, number nine is about relevant work ongoing in international, regional and national organizations, considering potential joint aims. Thank you for listening and I hope that this introduction gave you a basic understanding of DCCs. Now I wish all of you an inspiring discussion in this breakout session, looking forward to your valuable thoughts and ideas. With this, i like to end. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this presentation will tell you about the specifics uh, of collaboration in Russia, uh, processes related to the digitization of metallurgical services in our country, uh, how a service as collaboration will be carried out in the digital future, about the digital collaboration certificate and the requirements for this structure. Dear colleagues, uh, the title of my presentation, Requirements for the Structure and the Format of Digital uh, Certificate of Collaborations, the short is DCC. My name is Andrei Pankov, and I will tell you of this presentation. Uh, the presentation will, uh, will explain the basics of the DCC um, principles. Separately, I would like to express my good aid to colleagues from PTV Germany who were, point, uh, who were pioneered in this area and create the basis for the implementation of DCC in other countries. Uh, in this slide, you can see the uh, features of collaboration of measurement instruments in our country, in my country. Uh, only three characteristics. The first of one is uh, voluntariness, the second, traceability, and the third, uh, recognition of collaboration results during verification. Um, uh, you may ask uh, why there are so few um, requirements. This is due to the fact that the collaboration in Russia is not mandatory. Only verification of measurement instruments in the field of state of regulation is mandatory. And the second slide shows um, 
in, in the second slide shows the quantity statistic or which characterizes the system of measurement uh, uniformity, uniformity in Russia. Uh, and one of the lines, this one, this is the annual number of verifications and calibrations in Russia. It's about uh, 100 million. According to the official, official data of, of GIS Arshin information system, more than 13 uh, million verifications are carried out in the Russia anomaly. It is uh, clear what the number of calibration is much higher. Uh, the information on the number of calibrations in, is uh, approximately. Since the procedure is voluntary, there are no official statistics on it and we can estimate is indirectly. Due to the fact the calibration is voluntary, there are different systems and associations in which we can be carried out. Uh, the first of them is the national accreditation system, the second, uh, the Russian, the state system, uh, the second, the Russian calibration system, uh, which is situated in VNIMS, and uh, the last of them is the CIPM MRA. Uh, the framework through the which national intelligence institutes demonstrate the international um, equivalence of their measurement standards and the calibration and measurement certificates they serve. Uh, who uh, regulates the calibration uh, of measurement instruments in Russia? There are two ministers. The Minister of Economic and Development, uh, plus uh, Federal Service of Accreditation of Russian Federation. And the second ministry is the Ministry of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation and the uh, Eurostandard. Which of them have their own information systems, information systems and databases? Database of Russian accreditation and uh, the Federal Financial Fund of Assurance of Infirmity of Measurement named Arshin. And uh, calibration uh, the data of uh, calibration uh, may storage in all these systems, and first and the second. In the in future, it is possible to collect information of uh, calibration only in one of these systems. Maybe it will be a um, meteorological cloud. cloud. This slide is reference. Uh, the use of digital collaboration certificates is fully cons uh, consistent with the digital economic development strategy declared by our leader, our President Putin. At right side, you can see the um, decree of presidents, uh, order of government, uh, and, another, uh, and, and another document, uh, which um, according with digital economy. And the right side, you can see the uh, documents with uh, digital uh, about digital meteorology. This is federal law 102, and uh, the order of the government of the Russian Federation um, uh, and approval of the strategy for insurance in the uniformity of measurement in Russia Federation until 2025. All these uh, documents provide the digitalization in our country and the DCC, it's cool. <laughs> uh, next. Now we go to the DCC and about DCC. The next slide. Consider the benefits of using the, uh, uh, consider the benefits of using DCC. Uh, some of these advantages are characterized to any digital documents, not only for DCC. The first one is storage, authentication, protection, uniformity, availability. Uh, no, for example, storage provides easy storage software, loading, and digital processing of results. Uh, Authorization. Uh, the digital signature of certificate of, uh, of certification authority gives legal uh, signification to document. Protection. A cryptographic um, safeguard guaranteed 
integrity and reliability, uniformity, uniform form and uniformity of interpretation of equation results. Uh, availability. Uh, it is possible to gain access to the document from anywhere using the digital uh, means of communication. In addition, the CC implementation technology is public, uh, publi uh, publi publicly and available. Uh, there you can see the regional and international standards and documents. Um, which have requirements for the implementation of DCC. Basically, basic international documents are presented here, uh, but uh, we must also take into according original uh, Russian requirements. Uh, the international documents, um, the international system of units, first of one, uh, international vocabulary of metrology, WIM, a guide for expression of uncertainty in measurement, JUM, GUM. <laughs> reference book of found uh, fundamental physical constants so data and uh, standard um, isoec uh, 17025 general requirements for uh, for complement uh, for competence of testing and calibration laboratories and about uh, region standards of our country of russia is federal law 102 uh, that's an order of Ministry of Economic and Development, 70 SEM, which means accreditation, procedure of accreditation, and approval of accreditation criteria. The three documents. You can see this slide, all of them. This original, this um, international standards. Uh, now, some words about digital signature and uh, cryptography advantages and advantages of this technology. The use of uh, qualified electronic uh, signature granted the safety and integrity of data, but it intervenes and increases the um, cost of calibration. The second, the document with uh, electronic design signature have legal signific uh, uh, significance. The third, electronic digital signature is valid for one year. Before its expression, data is uh, replaced with a new one. Uh, it's about one month. In addition to the electronic digital signature, it is possible to use uh, the encryption procedure for the digital calibration certificate when the transferring data from the calibration laboratory to customer. And the last minus, um, in consistency of laws, when using a digital signature and the uh, log of industry certification center uh, within their standard system. Uh, now, uh, such um, certification uh, centers are situated in another uh, ministry and we uh, can, the problem, we connect with, uh, with him. This is an information slide. Uh, it's corrected uh, for our country. It is a definitive. Uh, the, you can see the be uh, benefits of storing digital calibration certificates in the second is a single federal information found, as in our, our case. Next slide. Uh, Let's go to DCC and we look the format of uh, data exchange uh, for DCC. We can choose one, two, three, four, five various formats and we look is their characteristics, uh, the first column there, and um, as, um, assessment of uh, properties is uh, presented in uh, pounds. pounds. Uh, you, for example, the following uh, properties are completed. Human re uh, readability, easy uh, of editing, easy of implementation, parsing, serial leasing size, stream processing, binary security, prevalence, support of editing, support of programming languages. Uh, in reality, at this moment, the, implement uh, the implementing software products uh, preference are in JSON or XML format. This, this, this one and this one 
אחרי זה... בעצם זה נעצר. Some difference between JSON and XML format. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of these uh, rating leaders. The main advantages of XML format from JSON are uh, this one. Uh, support many complex data type, including charts, images, and other data types. Makes information change easy and accessible for both B2B and B2C. And another one, at, uh, Uh, support the names, comments, and metadata. Um, all these three properties are doing the, the XML better than JSON. JSON is more uh, applicable in the exchange of data between information systems, and its role has only been increased in recent years. It is uh, lightsweer and faster. And now about XML. Uh, for a member of both reason, XML is used as a data exchange format for the digital calibration certificate. The structure of XML file is determined by is an XML schema of the document. Uh, the schema consists of structure, elements, and attributes. You can see this. And this is the link to schema of DCC certificate. It's creating the PTB. Now, at this side, you can see the simple schema, not DCC. You can see structure, you can see elements and attributes. Um, the schema defines a description of the valid XML document format expressed in restrictions of the structure and uh, convince of the document. It is often used uh, to indicate the agreement between the system. My system will be only uh, understand the XML correspondent to the uh, certain schema. If a certain XML satisfies the requirements of the schema, it is called valid. And now you can see the example of simple XML document. You can see prolog, root element XML, inventory, inventory. Uh, XML declaration, comments, and uh, super elements. It's simple. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the slide uh, shows the enlarged structure of digital certificates of calibration. The root DCC element is the digital calibration certificate element, the root element. And it includes four basic low-level elements what characterizes the content of the DCC. The first of them, administrative data. The second, measurement results, comments, and documents. The first of them, administrative data. The, um, essential native, um, the, uh, the essential native information for calibration. This is a regulated path. Uh, the measurement result stores all information of the result of the measurement. The measurement and result data must have a value and unit. Ideally, the units are C units. This is a particularly, uh, partly regulated area. Uh, the third element All uh, future information and files agreed between the customer and the calibration level can be increased in the, this element. This is not regulated parts. All future information and files, uh, this calibration parts can be inserted in the, the element. Files and the various types of information are converted using the base 4 uh, base 64 method so that they can store it in XML structure. 
uh, and the last element uh, um, document contains the human renewable variant of DCC. For example, PDF, GP, GPG, and another formats. This is a human related format. One, two, three. Uh, the next slide. Uh, now uh, we see the first element of DCC. Uh, DCC uh, administrative data. Administrative data. This native data element contains the all uh, uh, excellent administrative information for calibration. The entries uh, this area are basically the same and regulated in all DCCs, this regulation parts. Amputated data contains information of central interest. The data fields are fixed. The information is usually on the first page of analogy calibration certificate. You can see this, the, analog, the analog print screen for analog certificate of names. The data are used to clarify and deputy and calibration laboratory. The calibration object of the calibration customer. Uh, this is a program which can read XML files and uh, it uh, look uh, XML in this format. And this is a link to PTB site which discuss about uh, structure of DCC uh, more. And now we can look all of these elements shortly. The DC, not, the DC software, this is the core data, attempts, calibration laboratory, rest personal, customer, entertainment. Uh, software, this is a requirement, uh, required uh, position. Uh, essential information of identity of the software used to create and edit the DC of stored here. Core data, essential information for the identification of the material to be calibrated, as well as global classification of the calibration certificate. Items, uh, unique identification, description, and, and applicable conditions of the calibration object. The next one, calibration laboratory. This requirement, requirement uh, required uh, parts, element, essential information of the identification of the calibration laboratory, uh, rest persons, indication of the persons, responses for the reason of the report. Customer, uh, to, uh, um, this uh, element is required to identification of the calibration client, statement, uh, element for the inverting various statements. It's optional element. Uh, the next part of uh, DCC, that's the uh, measurement results. Uh, measurement results uh, element stored all information on the result of the measurement. The measurement and the result data must have a value and a unit. It, it, ideally, the unit is a C unit because the difference uh, because uh, of the different calibration requirements in the individual area, the DCs are different to each other. These parts uh, was a particularly regulated area and consists uh, some elements, some, some super elements. Now you can see the, uh, these parts in real uh, DCC. Uh, now we can see this element as uh, more flexible or more complex. And measurement result and element result. He has such tree. You can see value, unit, label, uh, result. This area uh, cannot be uh, set as a whole. It is necessary to unit. It is necessary to unify the exchange of measuring data in view of their uh, diversity and the uh, prevailing historical practice. The complete measured result includes the following data such as 
identifiers, management results, exploitation expressions, and uh, absolute of relative terms, coverage radio, uh, uh, ratio, units of measurement, blocks of text, length of uh, and time. Uh, it's a finish my presentation as uh, not early. Um, the third and fourth pass of uh, DCC are optional and not found on most digital calibration certificates. Uh, when using digital calibration certificates in Russia, I believe what the structure of the calibration certificate will be reduced to the third, to the one of the three elements. A human level version of the DCC will be created in a government information systems. What we are seeing now as the example of verification. That's all. Bye bye. Sorry for my English. <laughs>
Yes, thank you for that question. Um, so I'm happy that Susan Picard is here because I think she can <laughs> also uh, talk a little bit of par about part of these questions. Um, from what we heard in the last days with the FAIR principles and having data and different data silos and bringing this together. So FAIR is uh, one answer to that question, how this could be brought together without um, having one global central repository. Um, <laughs> So it's possible that uh, we have separate uh, repositories and through FAIR, the data could be findable from all these repositories. Okay, I'll, I will comment on the question also. The KCDB, it initially it was called Key Comparison Database, but as I said, it contains about more than 25,000 CMCs. And it's a part of the CIPM or MRA arrangement. So I'm, I'm the KCB coordinator. I'm not at all at the decision uh, level of what to put in the KCB or not. But as far as I see it, it's, uh, it's, not, the, it's not the first um, what say, uh, issue because uh, the key comparison database, it has been defined to contain uh, measurement and uh, uh, calibration capabilities of NMIs. So uh, I, I think that's the limit for that. Okay. So, but it's, it's I think it's not limited that uh, BIPM and national regional laboratories uh, bodies use same data structures for their CMCs in the background. I, I didn't catch your, your comment. Daniel, I didn't hear you. Okay, I, I tried to get again. I think I think um, this is not a limitation um, to the aim to use common or similar oh, no. formats for the CMCs uh, of on all these different levels. Not not at all. And, and the CMCs of the BIPM, and I should say, I like also the, we have the same definition. They are highly structured, so the structure is already there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go on to the next uh, question. This one was also uh, directed towards uh, Daniel. It says, uh, what, what, oops, just lost the question, sorry. Uh, this is the problem with voting is that they move around. It says, uh, what are the main goals to be achieved uh, to consider the DCC sufficient to represent all certificates? Uh, I would try to give a, a humble, answer to that question. Um, I think one aspect is ISO 17025 that this is sufficiently supported as a, it is the standard for calibration certificates worldwide for the content. Um, the other thing is uh, I think it needs sufficient um, cooperation of the communities. The communities are the experts in their domain they have to discuss how to represent their data in uh, DCC. So without their work, without their work to harmonize their data as well, it's it's difficult to answer that question with a yes or no. True enough. Okay. Um, so we have another question here. Uh, it says, in context of fair data, uh, objects, data, metadata, uh, documentation, um, Oops, I'm just sorry. I just lost the. Uh, I just lost the question. It moved on me. Uh, okay, I'm going to go on a different question because it just moved off my screen. Um, it says uh, it seems uh, it seems to be relatively easy to provide information in digital form in a DCC file to enable machine readability. Uh, interfaces have to be developed. Is this uh, the responsibility of the NMIs and laboratories, or the responsibility of their customers? Uh, what about liability? Um, perhaps I can comment on that. Um, we have the KCDB, and for the link between the NMIs and the KCDB, the, as the Dr. Milton uh, mentioned in the one of the presentations on Monday, the BIPM has developed quite recently an API, an application, uh, programming interface for the KCDB uh, where it's possible to make queries and get out the same results as uh, is included in the KCDB. I'm speaking about the open part. There is a part for review and, and exchange between 
um, between uh, the, the, inter the people interacting on this, uh, which is of course closed. Um, so that link, we, we have already made this API, so that link could provide uh, the tool to import the CMC in, in, in one way or another, in one form or another, into the calibration certificate. And it could be also the role of the PI, BIPM to have a tool how to interpret that or check your data. On the contrary, it's not for the BIPM to decide on the, uh, the layout of, of the digital uh, calibration certificate itself. But the, this interface, we're already working on that, and I think uh, yeah, that has advanced quite a deal. Okay. Um, another another question so yes, is uh, how? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, how, how will the NMIs? How will the NMIs achieve the digital signature? And I know Andrew, you talked a little bit about that in in your talk, but I think. Uh, Anybody can, can jump in and answer if they, they feel. I have a question for me, yes. Yeah. Um, the digital signature is a more complex uh, uh, question and uh, we need to solve on this question with uh, a law of regularity in some country. As for Russia, we have uh, some centers or which generate uh, the digital signature and save it and we use uh, our law. How it's in, in other countries, maybe in USA, in Japan, in, in uh, I don't know. Four country is a law regulated path. They generate uh, the digital signature. I, I can comment on that for PDB. We are right now in the process of introducing digital signatures. So first thing we did is change our policy how certificates can be provided to allow the electronic signatures and and then you have service providers giving you the technique the the keys the cryptographic uh, things you need to apply electronic signatures electronic seals so for, for the beginning it's rather straightforward to introduce this any other uh, comments on this <laughs> If I could have a little, a, a slight follow-up on that, uh, Andrew, in your in your your talk, you you mentioned that the digital signature was uh, good only for for one year. Is this uh, because of uh, a, a a regulation in in Russia, or uh, is this for some other reason? Yes, really, one year. Only one year, yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, if we resent, we give a new, a new signature, pay the money. For this, and I, when I analyze the signature plus and minus, I check the minus on this technology, and I think what uh, for our country is more, um, more better if we will have the central one database and uh, now we connect it with authorization login password and uh, save all digital signatures in the one place and one in one uh, uh, state database for our country it may be better does this naturally mean it's that... low regulation but uh, so does this naturally mean that the digital calibration certificates uh, after one year would not necessarily be valid uh, I don't know because of these parts, uh, the parts of digital signature, it's um, parts of certification centers which working on FSB uh, with military parts of our regulation country, not meteorological parts. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so let's move on to the next question. It says, um, should the uh, KCDB database should be published in a blockchain uh, for everyone to uh, access? Um, uh, Susan, do you uh, have an answer for this uh, question? Uh, I'm not a specialist on blockchains, uh, but it can be published uh, via um, the API, uh, which is machine readable, and that will come into 
that will come. Is this concerning the, the security issues? Well, Not really. I can comment on that. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Um, this has something to do with uh, security. So uh, the blockchain is a way to yeah. like cryptographic secure every new entry and have everything protected from manipulation. This would be an application. Um, the question is how high is the risk if this database is manipulated or was it a problem until now for the web page KCDB? Um, um, so, so, about this question, uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, it, yeah. um, <laughs> about blockchain, yes, why not? The blockchain technology is cool, but we um, can use uh, not uh, public blockchain and use private blockchain. Uh, on it's maybe five or six copy, not for uh, many copies uh, of we uh, of uh, uh, all members of the blockchain group yeah maybe like the private the... blockchain is more useful and uh, yeah. still i i do understand completely okay. the issues about security as daniel said a little bit uh, when you make you make a sort of risk estimate, also how 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 probable is it to manipulate uh, calibration certificates and uh, and this? That I'm I'm not an expert on that. On the contrary, when I've been listening to uh, the previous days, um, I listened to a lot of harmonization, machine readable harmonization, interactability to be able to interpret in in both ways. Um, to have uh, numerical data digi digitization. So um, I think those, if I could say basic things to have, as uh, Dr. Usuda said, to have a more concrete model is very important. And I appreciated a lot uh, more Custer's and Michael Schwartz's um, contribution was it yesterday. Uh, on uh, on how they have uh, worked on uh, the MMI and um, how to make uh, simulations of, um, of, uh, of of digital certificates within the United States for this. So I think there are some basic principles we need to to find how to how to express quantities, how to express the the uh, units, um, and of course. Uh, the security is also important, but we don't have those the, the, the basis um, the basis for this yet. So I think that would be important to to carry forward that, that work. If I could add something real quick, everybody's talking blockchain, and that's a buzzword everybody wants to get into. There's another technology out there called file chain. And I think for what we want to do with DCC, file chain is a better analogy because you store a file, a digital certificate of calibration in the file chain, and it gets distributed across the network. And people have to show proof of storage to earn monetary, monetary values out of it. So now we don't have to get a bunch of databases working together to hold a blockchain. You can just store your DCC or your document in a file chain, and then it can be accessible from anywhere and encrypted on top of that. So I think we have time for just one or two more questions. Um, so uh, just picking the first one from the list, it says, well, would the panel members mind discussing their interactions with laboratory customers and how they expect to use DCCs now uh, and into the future? And uh, perhaps this would be, uh, we've got several panel members who could, could answer this, but perhaps we could start with uh, Daniel. Okay, um, thank you for that question. Uh, of course, we are in um, intensive contact with um, manufacturers of instruments who like to use the DCC. Um, so there are projects and regular meetings with them like GimmeMac and Smartcom to progress this. Um, of course, uh, expectations, how to use the DCCs, um, 
the expectation is to enrich the measurements by metadata that can be found in DCCs. Like you can reuse calibration curves or even covariances mm -hmm. that are in the analog DCC not available at the moment. Yeah. Andrew, do you have uh, something to add to this as well? In our countries, uh, all simple. Uh, the calibration is voluntless and uh, it's mean uh, what uh, so not many laboratories use it in on paper and yeah. in digital format it's more or less um may i may i take the word um yes, please. I, I i again <laughs> i don't say something original i i cite somebody else i listened to stuart chalk also the other day and i think he said some very something very reasonable that we need to listen to the nmis uh needs when i said nmis is of course uh, uh designated institutes also and listen to the stakeholders needs uh so that, that is also part too, because the, the, those are the persons we we are uh, are are delivering service to, and who will use this. So I think that's important too. Okay. Uh, as many people have said during this uh, uh, workshop, that to work together, that's important. Well, I'm, I'm being told that uh, we need to conclude. <laughs> so uh, this has been a great panel and I think we could probably go on for much longer. This is a very uh, important topic and uh, really thank you uh, to, to, to our speakers, uh, Andrew uh, and Daniel uh, as well, especially. Um, they were really great talks and prompted this uh, discussion. So thank you everyone. And I hope you, the rest of the workshop is really, really uh, helpful to, to everyone. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second round of parallel sessions. In this room, our topic will be digital calibration certificates. I remind you that there are three other topics parallel to these sessions, which are SI core representation and services interoperability, machine actionable metadata and data, readiness of data for artificial intelligence and machine learning. So let's see what we have for this round. Next, please. Uh, to start this session, we will have two previously recorded representations. The first is by Daniel Hutchenrater from PTV. Daniel Hutchenrater has been a member of the Physical Technical Bundestag, PTV in Germany, since 2015. His field of work is focused on the online validation of computational extensive evaluation algorithms and the development of universal data models for digital transformation in metrology. And the second presentation will be by Andrew Panko from Russia. That is entitled Requirements for the Structure and Data Format of the Digital Calibration Certificate. Uh, Andrew Panko is head of the Testing Software Laboratory of BNIIMS, Russia. He has been dealing with measuring software and information technology since 2004 and is a developer of several standards and recommendations on the metrology field. At the end of this presentation, we will have time to discuss some of these topics. There, in addition to Daniel and Andre, we'll be joining with Susan Picard from PTV and Michael Schwartz and Colin Delker from NNCCLA to make the discussion on this topic. So please write the question and comments in the chat section to take it when we return. So let's go to the presentations. Thank you. Dear participants of DSI and FAIR Digital Data Workshop, my name is Daniel Hutschenreuter. I'm a member of the expert group that is supporting CIPM at the transformation of DSI into a digital world. Today, it is my pleasure to give you a brief technical introduction to digital calibration certificates in the context of DSI and machine actionable data. Let us start with the fundamental question, what digital calibration certificate means. First, human readable certificates in digital formats like PDF or Word are not sufficient as digital calibration certificates. DCCs denote files providing the data from calibration in machine actionable form. The data would be given in a structured format like JSON or XML that can be understood by humans too. In many applications, digitalization comes along with an automation of processes such as in automated manufacturing and measuring. Here, DCCs will contribute to the underlying digital data infrastructure. Our challenge is to make the multiple knowledge from different domains in calibration understandable to machines. This example shows the situation uh, as a text that you can find in any calibration certificate today. The green marked information represents measured quantities, values, units, and uncertainties based on fundamental definitions from the SI, WIM, and GUM. The CIPM SI digital framework is aiming to define universal digital representation for this data. It would be the anchor for interoperability and reuse of data in all domains of the quality infrastructure that are using DSI. In addition, the blue text is contextual knowledge, such as provenance and quality information, calibration methods and procedures, instruments and calibration classes, locations and relations between all these information. It also needs to be considered for a machine actionable DCC. New kinds of measuring equipment will allow to store calibration data on the device, allowing to use this data to enhance measurement results. Thus, the IPM endorses the DCC for metrological traceability at the point of measurement. In this respect, DCCs and in general digital certificates with measurement data are interlacing with DSI. The CIPM task group and expert group on the digital SI sees the importance to develop harmonized data services and tools for a SI digital framework that meets the needs of the organizations in the international quality infrastructure. 
These nine potential topics are more detailed ideas about an interconnection of DCCs with DSI in fair digital data. Number one considers DCCs building upon common data formats for quantities, values as I units and uncertainties. Number two is about DCCs obtaining information on the qualification through a digital link with a fair database of calibration measurement capability entries. Number three considers structured knowledge on calibration in the form of taxonomies, controlled vocabularies and ontologies. Number four is about services supporting the usage of data in DCCs and users of DCCs, for example, through software tools that help to read data or QR codes on instruments that help to access the data of calibration. Number five considers the impact from and requirements for reference fair metadata in a DCC. Number six considers to assemble a metrological traceability chain from a DCC back to this I definition and fundamental constants. Number seven is about changes of instruments and instrument software motivated by DCCs, also considering digital twins of measuring instruments. Number eight considers the infrastructure that is needed to support the integrity of digital data, like electronic signatures and persistent storage. And finally, number nine is about relevant work ongoing in international, regional and national organizations, considering potential joint aims. Thank you for listening. And I hope that this introduction gave you a basic understanding of DCCs. Now I wish all of you an inspiring discussion in this breakout session, looking forward to your valuable thoughts and ideas. With this, i like to end. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this presentation will tell you about the specifics uh, of calibration in Russia, uh, processes related to the digitization of metallurgical services in our country, uh, how services as calibration will be carried out in the digital future, about the digital calibration certificate and the requirements for this structure. Dear colleagues, uh, the title of my presentation, requirements for the structure and the format of digital uh, certificate of calibrations, the short is DCC. My name is Andrei Pankov, and I will tell you of this presentation. Uh, the presentation will, uh, will explain the basics of the DCC um, principles. Separately, I would like to express my good aid to colleagues from PTB Germany who were, point, uh, who were pioneered in this area and create the basis for the implementation of DCC in other countries. Uh, in this slide, you can see the uh, features of calibration of measurement instruments in our country, in my country. Uh, only three characteristics. The first of one is uh, voluntary lens. The second, traceability. And the third, uh, recognition of calibration results during verification. Um, uh, you may ask uh, why there are so few um, requirements. This is due to the fact that the calibration in Russia is not mandatory. Only verification of measurement instruments in the field of state of regulation is mandatory. And the second slide shows um, in, in the second slide shows the quantity statistic or which characterizes the system of measurement uh, uniformity, uniformity in Russia. Uh, and one of the lines, this one, this is the annual number of verifications and calibrations in Russia. It's about uh, 100 million. According to the official, official data of, of GIS Arshin information system, more than 13 uh, million verifications are carried out in the Russia anomaly. 
it is uh, clear what the number of calibration is much higher. Uh, the information on the number of calibrations is, is uh, approximately. Since the procedure is voluntary, there are no official statistics on it, and we can estimate is indirectly. Due to the fact the calibration is voluntary, there are different systems and situations in which we can uh, be carried out. Uh, the first of them is the national accreditation system. The second, uh, the Russian, this is the state system. Uh, the second, the Russian calibration system, uh, which is situated in VNIMS. And uh, the last of them, at a CIPM MRA, uh, the framework through the which national intelligence institutes demonstrate the international um, equivalence of their measurement standards and the calibration and measurement certificates they serve. Uh, who uh, regulates the calibration uh, of measurement instruments in Russia? There are two ministers. The Minister of Economic and Development uh, plus uh, Federal Service of Accreditation of Russian Federation. And the second ministry is the Ministry of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation and the uh, Rostandard. Which of them have their own information, on systems, information systems and databases? database of Russian accreditation and uh, the Federal Federation Fund of Assurance of Infirmity of Measurement, named Arshin. And uh, calibration, uh, the data of uh, calibration, uh, may storage in all these systems, and first and the second. And uh, in future, it is possible to collect information of uh, calibration only in one of this system, maybe it will be a um, meteorological cloud. cloud. This slide is reference. Uh, the use of digital collaboration certificates is fully cons uh, consistent with the digital economic development strategy declared by our leader, our President Putin. At uh, right side, you can see the Mm, decree of presidents, uh, order of government, uh, and, then others, uh, and, and then other documents, uh, which um, according with digital economy. And the right side, you can see the uh, documents with uh, digital, uh, about digital metrology. This federal law 102, and uh, the order of the government of the Russian Federation, um, Uh, an approval of the strategy for insurance in the uniformity of measurement in Russia Federation until 2025. All these uh, documents provide the digitalization in our country and the DCC, it's cool. <laughs> uh, next. Now we go to the DCC and about DCC. The next slide. Consider the benefits of using the, uh, uh, consider the benefits of using DCC. Uh, some of these advantages are connected to any digital documents, not only for DCC. The first one is storage, authentication, protection, uniformity, availability. Uh, no, for example, storage provides easy storage software loading and digital processing of results. Uh, Authorization. Uh, the digital signature of certificate of, uh, of certification authority gives legal uh, signification to document. Protection. A group of this um, safeguard, guaranteed integrity and reliability. Uniformity. Uniform form and uniformity of interpretation of qualification results. Uh, availability. Uh, it is possible to gain access to the document from anywhere using the digital uh, means of communication. In addition, this is the implementation technology is public, uh, publi uh, publi publicly and available. Uh, there you can see the regional and international standards and documents. Um, 
which have requirements for the implementation of DCC. Basically, basic international documents are presented here, uh, but uh, we must also take into according original uh, Russian requirements. Uh, the international documents, um, the international system of units, first of one, uh, international vocabulary of metrology, WIM, a guide for expression of uncertainty in measurement, Jum, GUM, Jum, <laughs> reference book of found, uh, fundamental physical constant, so data, and uh, standard um, ISOEC uh, 17.025, general requirements for, uh, for, um, for competence of testing and calibration laboratories. And about uh, region standards of our country, of Russia, is federal law 102. Uh, that's an order of Ministry of Economic and Development. 70, same, it means accreditation, procedure of accreditation, and approval of accreditation criteria. The three documents. You can see this slide, all of them. This original, this international standard. Uh, now, some words about digital signature and uh, cryptography advantages and advantages of this technology. The use of uh, qualified electronic uh, signature granted the safety and integrity of data, but it intervenes and increases the um, cost of calibration. The second, uh, the document with uh, electronic design signature have legal signific uh, signification, uh, significance. The third, electronic digital signature is valid for one year. Before its expression, data is uh, replaced with a new one. Uh, it's about one month. In addition to the electronic digital signature, it is possible to use uh, the encryption procedure for the digital calibration certificate when the transferring data from the calibration laboratory to customer. And the last minus, um, in consistency of laws, when using a digital signature and the uh, log of industry certification center uh, within their standard system. Uh, now, uh, such um, certification uh, centers are situated in another uh, ministry and we uh, can, the problem with connect with, uh, with him. This is an information slide. Uh, it's corrected uh, for our country. It is definitive. Uh, the, you can see the be uh, benefits of storing digital calibration certificates in the second is a single federal information found, as in our, our case. Next slide. Uh, Let's go to DCC and we look the format of uh, data exchange uh, for DCC. We can choose one, two, three, four, five various formats and we look at their characteristics, uh, the first column there, and um, as, um, assessment of uh, properties is uh, presented in uh, pounds. pounds. Uh, in, for example, the following uh, properties are complained. Human re uh, readability, easy uh, of editing, easy of implementation, parsing, serial listening size, stream processing, binary security, prevalence, support of editing, support of programming languages. Uh, in reality, at this moment, the, implement uh, the implementing software products uh, preference are uh, in JSON or XML format. The, this, this one and this one uh, has uh, better than, than another. This. Some difference between JSON and XML format. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of these uh, rating leaders. The main advantages of XML format from JSON are uh, this one. Uh, support many complex data type, including charts, images, and other data types. Makes information change easy and accessible for both B2B and B2C. And another one, it uh, 
uh, support the names, comments, and metadata. Um, all these three properties are doing the, the XML better than JSON. JSON is more uh, applicable in the exchange of data between information systems, and its role has only been increased in recent years. It is uh, light, swear, and faster. And now about XML. Uh, for a member of a both reason, XML is used as a data exchange format for the digital calibration certificate. The structure of XML file is determined by is an XML schema of the document. A schema consists of structure, elements, and attributes. You can see this. And this is a link to schema of DCC certificate. It's creating the PTB. Now, at this side, you can see the simple schema. Not DCC. You can see structure. You can see elements and attributes. Um, the schema defines a description of the valid XML document format expressed in restrictions of the structure and uh, convince of the document. It is often used uh, to indicate the agreement between the system. My system will be only uh, understand the XML corresponding to the uh, certain schema. If a certain XML satisfies the requirements of the schema, it is called valid. And now you can see the example of simple XML document. You can see prolog, root element XML, inventory, inventory, um, XML declaration, comments, and uh, super elements. It's simple. Uh, Uh, the slide uh, shows the enlarged structure of digital certificate of calibration. The root DCC element is the digital calibration certificate element, the root element. And it includes four basic low-level elements what characterizes the content of the DCC. The first of them, administrative data. The second, measurement results, comments and documents. The first of them, administrative data, the um, essential native uh, information, uh, the, uh, the essential native information for calibration. This is a regulated part. Uh, the measurement result stores all information of the result of the measurement. The measurement and result data must have a value and unit. Ideally, the units are C units. This is a particularly, uh, partly regulated area. Uh, the third element, all uh, future information and files agreed between the customer and the calibration level can be increased in the, this element. This is not regulated parts. All future information and files, mm, uh, this calibration parts can be inserted in the, the element. Files and the various types of information are converted using the base 4 uh, base 64 uh, methods so that they can store it in XML structure. Uh, and the last element uh, um, document contains the human renewable variant of DCC. For example, PDF, GP, G, GPG, and another formats. This is a human related format. One, two, three. Uh, the next slide. Uh, now uh, we see the first element of DCC, uh, DCC uh, administrative data, administrative data. Mm. 
This material data element contains the all uh, uh, salient administrative information for calibration. The entries uh, this area are basically the same and regulated in all DCCs, this regulation parts. Amputated data contains the information of central interest. The data fields are fixed. The information is usually on the first page of analogy calibration certificate. You can see this, the, analogy, the analog print screen for analog certificate of names. The data are used to query and deputy and calibration laboratory. The calibration object of the calibration customer. Uh, this is a program which can read XML files and uh, it uh, look uh, XML in this format. And this is a link to PTB site which discuss about uh, structure of DCC uh, more. And now we can look all of these elements shortly. This is not this is software, this is the core data, items, calibration laboratory, rest personal, customer, entertainments. Uh, software. This is requirement, uh, required uh, position. Uh, essential information of identity of the software used to create and edit the DC of stored here. Core data, essential information for the identification of the material to be calibrated as well as global classification of the calibration certificate. Items, uh, unique identification, description, and the and applicable conditions of the calibration object. The next one, calibration laboratory. This requirement, requirement uh, required uh, parts element. Essential information of the identification of the calibration laboratory. Uh, race persons, indication of the persons responses for the reason of the report. Customer, uh, to, uh, um, this uh, element is required to identification of the calibration client, statement, uh, element for the inverting various statements. It's optional element. Uh, the next part of uh, DCC, that's the uh, measurement results. Uh, measurement results uh, element stored all information on the result of the measurement. The measurement and the result data must have a value and a unit. It, it, ideally, the unit is a C unit because the difference uh, because uh, of the different calibration requirements in the individual area, the DCs are different to each other. This part uh, was a particularly regulated area and consists uh, some elements, some, some super elements. Now you can see the, uh, these parts in real uh, DCC. Uh, now we can see this element as a more flexible or more complex. And measurement result and element result. He has such tree. You can see value, unit, label, uh, result. This area uh, cannot be uh, set as a whole. It is necessary to unit. It is necessary to unify the exchange of measuring data in view of their uh, diversity and the uh, prevailing historical practice. The complete measured result includes the following data such as identifiers, measurement results, exploitation expressions and uh, absolute of relative terms, coverage radio, uh, ratio, units of measurement, blocks of text, length of uh, and time. Uh, it's a finish my presentation. As a note earlier, um, the third and fourth parts of uh, DCC are optional and not found on most digital calibration certificates. Uh, when using digital calibration certificates in Russia, I believe what the structure of the calibration certificate will be reduced to the third, to the one of the three elements. A human level version of the DCC will be created in a government information systems. 
what we are seeing now as the example of verification. That's all. Bye bye. Sorry for my English. <laughs>
you may have some engagement with NMIs. Agreeing on the needs of NMIs, you need engagement with accreditation bodies or say accredited laboratories. Um, and soon you come to the point where each domain uh, and calibration has its own needs. Uh, so the engagement should also uh, consider that uh, these communities, national, regional, regional, international, with same uh, calibration quantities, need also to work together to uh, agree on their specific needs and the digital calibration certificates. Uh, Andrew or anyone else have uh, yes, I'm, some opinions? Yes, I am agree with Daniel. In many respects, it's a willful um, deci decision of regulators of meteorological in our countries. Well, I can comment on this also, actually, that the BIPM uh, has the tools to make the link with the NMIs. But we we are not. It's a sort of negative um, engagement that we are not involved to to define how will the digital calibration certificate look like. So. Any other comments from our, our panel on this question? Okay, thank you. That's a good question. And uh, we'll move to the next. It says, to all, currently there are several existing regional standards and regulations for the use of digital signatures. However, these signatures are not mutually recognized in other regions or on a global level, uh, which would be uh, necessary for uh, global metrology infrastructure. What do you consider to be being the next steps to ensure the mutual recognition? Okay, so this is a, a very good question. Uh, there's been some, some discussions on the signatures. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps uh, this is for everyone, but uh, I know Andrew, you had some some statements in your talk about the digital signatures. Did you want to lead off with this? Uh, about uh, digital signature, it's for me, um, it's so difficult term. Uh, because I negative uh, for digital signature, really negative. As for me, uh, as I'm a head of uh, laboratory for, of testing software, uh, we usually use the authorization only only digital signature, but not the digital signature. They are USB K for authorization. And uh, when we uh, input login and uh, password, uh, I think it's the main protection uh, for all databases and uh, why i'm mm, negative for dcc because uh, meteorological institutes or meteorological regulators can't control this area and uh, i think it's uh, bad it's uh, not good for us for meteorological services if we can't control the DCC, maybe it's more pretty, uh, more more better if we have uh, some certification uh, center in the structure of uh, raw standard, and it uh, makes the digital signatures for all members of um, all meteorologicals. That's my opinion. Yeah. Does anybody else have uh, some comments on, on this uh, question? I kind of see it as a stacking problem. So that uh, once we get a, uh, you know, reaching back to Martin's question, once we get this international standard put together for like the DCC, the inside of that DCC will be the signing and authentication uh, process inside of that. So I think the first problem is not how do you do your signing, First problem is how do you share the documents? And then from that sharing, then you'll add on to it how you're going to uh, sign the documents. Yeah, so perhaps uh, to prefer, paraphrase and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, which are, it seems like there's a difference between the digital signing and the security, perhaps. Or maybe these are separable issues. Yes, I see them as separable because like PDF has an ability that you can go in and digitally sign, you know, a PDF 
And then uh, DCC, if if I remember correctly, looking at their standards, they had ways you could go in and put digital signatures and checksums on that DCC, that XML file. So, so I think they're going to be tightly coupled. And then on top of it, it'll be how you encrypt it and and hide it and secure it from people who are not allowed to view it. Yeah. Is, is there some other um, comments on this? So, so I have one last comment. So um, today, uh, the exchange of calibration certificates uh, is organized bilateral between the laboratory and the customer of the calibration. So I think for the beginning, um, such a bilateral acceptance of electronic signatures can work. Um, a longer vision may be the big question to the community if we need an uh, infrastructure for a uniform signature and for calibration, uh, not only regional, maybe worldwide. And then we are again in the domain of asking ourselves, do we need a encryption standard that all can use? Um, or do we go the way of mutual recognition? And in Europe, for example, the way of mutual recognition is quite successful. Uh, we have the IDIS regulation that says that the countries recognize uh, the electronic signatures of the other countries in the EU. Okay, very interesting. Uh, any anybody else have some comments on this? Okay, so let's go into the next question. That was a, a very good one. Uh, <clears throat> So this one was addressed to Daniel. It says, uh, temperature, pressure, and humidity are used in all laboratories. Are these DCCs available? And can they be distributed to interested laboratories? Uh, if not, when, when will this be available? Well, so thank you for that question. Um, yes, yeah, so this are uh, indeed the uh, um, most fundamental uh, quantities that are reused in many uh, calibrations, of course. Um, so at the moment, PDB or the PDB network is working on that to provide good practice examples how calibration certificates uh, for that domains can look like. And uh, I'm sure you can, for example, uh, get in contact with PDB to be up to date on the next updates to get an insight on that development. So happy if you want to send me an email or my colleague Siegfried Hackel, who is the main coordinator of calibration certificates um, that you have heard of today. So perhaps just to be a little more, more broad and uh, for general understanding. So is this really directed towards uh, the temperature and pressure that are used during a calibration measurement of another instrument? So, so yes, if you are in your laboratory and you do in calibration, then uh, many times you have uh, in your lab uh, temperature sensor, humidity and pressure sensors. Um, and these are also uh, calibrated sensors, at least on the NMI level and I think for many higher laboratories. Um, so I think with this respect, this is very fundamental to have digital calibration certificates on that level. And the data from that will feed into subsequent calibrations where this measures our um, influence conditions, ambient conditions. Measurement result. Mm -hmm. okay. but, uh, thank you. Anybody else with some comments on this? Okay, let's go on to the next question. It says, um, <clears throat> so beginning uh, in about 1997 and still continuing, IEEE Instrumentation and Measurement Society has produced a STD-1451 Smart Transducer Interface Standard. Uh, it seems to me there's a lot of overlap between FAIR and 1451 concerning calibration cert certification, and perhaps much more. Have you uh, investigated what standard 1451 offers? Uh, is anybody uh, in, in this panel familiar with this uh, the standard and this issue? I don't know the standard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So maybe uh, one general comment. Uh, if we look at the national quality infrastructure as it is today, 
Um, then uh, for digitization, we may ask, uh, how could IEEE be involved in that? So I have the feeling they are missing at certain points right now, IEEE. Okay. Um, so another question. Uh, um, uh, directed to Andrew is, uh, are the properties of the DCC you presented compatible with DCCs developed in other regions? Uh, as, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. as we say, uh, the DCC have a structure and have uh, four parts. And I think what the first parts, administrative data, you can use in all regionals. And but the second part, uh, it's more di more difference because, uh, for example, we have a law or which contains the all measurements units in Russian Federation, and we must uh, uh, these requirements use these requirements. And I think what the second parts of DCC, it's more it's more uh, it's a difference for all regions. No, and uh, about the third and fourth parts, it's um, not regulated. It's different for all all regions. So, it, but the awesome. main structure, I mean, the DCC main structure, uh, XML schema, is uh, the same in the all regions. Yeah, that's a, a very good point. Uh, does anybody else have some comments about the general uh, compatibility of DCCs between uh, different different regions uh, of of the of the world? So uh, I, I think uh, this question is not so easy to, uh, to answer because there are not so many DCC developments um, that are machine readable files. So I recognize here the NCSL work with me in the area of accreditation. Uh, of course, this PDB work um, and then some other smaller projects on that. It's hard to say if, how far everything is comparable at the moment without further deeper investigation. So uh, maybe a, a deeper question on this uh, would be, uh, as was pointed out, if we use say a XML schema or something, this is something that is universally uh, compatible, but uh, are there, as the question indicates, are there other properties that may be not so portable uh, between regions or that would require some degree of standardization in order to make them compatible? Is there something uh, uh, in particular that you can think of maybe? Well, we have the first problem out there of, you know, Europeans and Americans can't get commas and uh, decimal places correct. So that's one of the things we have to work out. Americans have this problem of putting a uh, month, day, year when we put a date on something. And Europeans will do a uh, day, month. Year. So there's a lot of little idiosyncrasies that we'll have to work out as we make these standards that become you know, an international data standard to get it all on that same thing. And uh, one of the meetings we had yesterday, the uh, people in uh, Japan and China, you know, they're talking about, you know, how, how the Chinese characters and the Japanese characters get written. You know, that's another thing that's going to be a huge problem. You know, getting, getting something that's international and can be used around the world is, is going to be a big challenge. Okay, thank you. I have a oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Yes, I have a comment. Uh, uh, I, I agree that there are uh, uh, several, many, many examples like that, like writing ionization in uh, with a Z or an S uh, and such things. Uh, nevertheless, we do have international organizations. We have standards also. So, for the example, for for the case of date, we have an ISO format. So there, there's a recommendation for a standard for such a thing. And I think also when we will develop this, uh, we already have an international network that I think we should benefit from. Uh, 
it's already there so we don't need to reinvent the wheel so let's let's use that as, as a help it will be very helpful okay so i think uh we we are uh, the finish time do we have time for one more question or, or not Okay, so we have time for one more. And so, uh, so I'll just read the first one here. It says, in my field, uh, electric power, uh, there are many operational measurements. The specification of a laboratory calibration uncertainty is made irrelevant by the large uncertainty uh, on the signal. My group is working on quality metric of a different kind. Uh, comments. Um, so, uh, so this is not uh, perhaps uh, is this a is this a is uh, is this a something that uh, digital uh, calibration certificates can uh, can help with? It's asking for a different kind of uh, quality metric. <clears throat> Perhaps this is not so uh, specific to digital cal calibration certificates. Uh, it's more of a general uh, un uncertainty uh, and fit for purpose uh, issue, perhaps. I think in there, and and because I've done a little bit of stuff recently with the power industry, that I, I think what happens inside of the power industry is, you know, most of the people that are working in the power industry and they're starting to do more 17025 calibrations is your typical house meters and you know that typical meter that most people have for the energy industry that the tolerances that you have to calibrate something to are very very large so so you know where you get your your energy calibration meter calibrated at it's not that big of a deal until you start getting into something where you're looking at ratio transformers to where you're working, you know, with somebody like a, like a manufacturer, somebody that's going to consume a lot of power, like a, a like a, a, a steel industry, you know, using energy to do that. The, those guys there that they're going to want to have these more accurate calibrations. But the general part of it is, I, I think the in, the power industry just doesn't need that. Uh, you know, we're talking parts per million, and they're talking, you know, two percent. You know, I think there's that much difference in in what their uncertainty needs are okay thank you michael um okay i think uh that would be the the last question that we can we can take uh, and we will conclude uh, this uh panel panel discussion Thank you to all of our uh, our panel our panelists. It was a, a really great discussion, and thank you especially to our speakers uh, Daniel and and Andrew uh, for their presentations. Yeah, thank you all for your participation. Very good comments. So, so thank you very much for your participation. See you.